Hey, what's up everybody? Good morning, fam. Hope you had a safe red Wednesday. Yesterday, consolidation did start in the market. A little bit of a pullback. Now we're gonna find out. We're going to find out. I think it, it should really tell us today, right? In the next 24 hours. I don't mean this morning. If this is gonna be the true start of our pullback because we did see that signal yesterday it was showing us in NQ. That's the one thing I was a little bit worried about in the morning when I was looking at the charts. But uh, we did see a reaction. We did see a pullback. It wasn't significant. Let's not forget that for now. It wasn't significant. So it could get. It could get to the part where to the point where people start to ooh okay now we're really starting to see a pullback because this is very minuscule right now considering where we're coming off of our top. We have not even broken our support. Like this is a minor support, but you can see we have a double bottom. So it's becoming a little bit more of a notable range. So that's gonna be the level really to focus on today and in the coming days, because what could happen here, the market always gives you that opportunity, right? That second chance that oftentimes it gives you a third chance to recognize, okay, here we're rejecting the zone and we're gonna see a pullback. Cause what could happen here is we come all the way back up to the zone get a back test essentially of this trend line that was pushing us down, like giving us the support and then this one was pushing us down, but act as a resistance and then start to drop back down. That's one thing that I'm gonna be watching for today. Now, very similar, if you look at ES and you look at it on the short time frame, this was another signal yesterday because we're thinking, okay, you know, it's very healthy, it's very healthy. And then right in here, we start to see a little bit of a V shape. We came back down and it looked like, okay, nice higher low, this reversal counts like they're gonna pivot, they're gonna shoot it back up, and right in there, um, it got rejected. And then we started to see a pullback. And this was looking like impulsive, right? You had the volume, everything was strong, but the bulls were able to buy it up, okay? We were able to buy it up, and we got back near to those levels, and then we started to fade in the overnight market, and you know, almost red to green, almost. We just tried to go red to green as we came right back up into that zone again. So I'm looking at this, and I'm saying on a daily, Okay, from a daily perspective, there's still a lot of wicks forming, but we did lose the daily ADMA and we don't have a clean trend. We've got all these upper wicks over here. We've got a curl at the top. We did overshoot essentially what could be a rising wedge, which would cause, if this is really going to play out, I mean, this is the pattern that, you know, I would say it's the most visible pattern everyone's looking at. Lower trend line from Corona. Like that's what that line up there is in case anybody's wondering. If this pattern is really going to play out and this is going to be an overshoot, we were going to come down much lower. We should be looking to see a stronger pullback, likely come back down into this 4,200 range, 42, yeah, right about into this range. That's where I would be looking for. And that would mean gross stocks and stocks that are trading near all-time highs are gonna get a significant pullback, which is going to create a fantastic opportunity going into the end of the year, but will mean we're gonna to have to be super patient in that development. We can't say that right now. We can't say it's gonna come down to 4,200. We've gotta see the NASDAQ break this support. We've gotta see a little bit more volume coming in. We've gotta see some pace. As of right now, we're not seeing that. This could do it today, right? In the next 24 hours, we see that this is going to be a bear flag, and then we get concerned that, not concerned, actually, I would, let's change the language. We get excited that it's gonna create that big opportunity lower. We would bear flag and we would drop. First level I'd be watching is this lower trend line in here. Okay, numerous touches off of it. It'll just be above this GP. By the time we get to it, I think it'll be the 0.5 in that zone, right? Somewhere in this range by the time we get to it, unless we absolutely dump today, which I don't think it's on the table, but let's be prepared for it. But this is what I'm looking for right now, that we do have the potential of a bear flag. If we do get over the four hour ADMA and we close up over it, as you can see, it's dragging us down right now. I would watch the golden pocket, okay? If we get up as a golden pocket, it's not a bear flag, but what we would be looking for is an ABC correction. We would have our first move, a bounce, right? We set up the B and then we'll look for a one-to-one -one extension down to the downside, right? Let's just think what that would look like if we got up to the GP. One to one would be a little bit higher if we got into the GP, right? That's where it would be 4464 would line up right with the support. Something to consider. That's what I'm going to be watching in terms of the overall market. I want to see what the volume looks like, what the algos look like, what this pattern looks like. This pattern being the bear flag. Let's watch this trend line in here that we're constantly rejecting, right? Constantly rejecting in here. One, two, three, four, five, six clear pivots off of it. 
So we know now, uh, essentially, we break this trend line, there's going to be a play in SPXL, TQQQ, TNNA. Likely everyone's going to have an opportunity to go up, and then I'll be watching into that golden pocket zone. That's what I'm going to be, you, know, you, could, you could look at this as not just a trend line, that it's a falling broadening wedge, right? Falling broadening wedge is a bullish reversal pattern. It could be a trap pattern because it looks like it's going to go straight back up. We get into buy the dip mode, and I would say stay by the dip mode, stay it but with caution, with protection, with saying, hey, here's where my stop losses are, but not to just sit there and be like, oh, we just made a new all-time high and I didn't buy it because everyone was looking bearish at that time. No, no excuses, right? You say, hey, here's opportunity. Do you want to participate or do you want to take a week or two off and let things develop? Because there's going to be a lot of opportunity if we do drop down. But if we do pivot back up, we got names that are trading near all-time highs that are likely going to see some continuation. And those buy the dip scenarios, Apple goes back and makes a new all-time high. You know, I'm just throwing Apple out there. There's so many names that are trading near the tops of their recent highs. So that's what I'd be watching for. If this is going to be a falling broadening wedge, it doesn't mean that we're going to break out anytime soon. We could also come back down, make a new low, and then we get a dip buy signal off of this zone. NQ, that level, this is what I'm going to be watching. What's the reaction when we come back down and revisit this zone? Last, uh, actually, let's talk about the Dow really quickly because the Dow is reacting down into this zone. Now, it's not a perfect touch this time. You can see we dropped below it. We dropped below it in here, but it's a range, right? We know this is a range that is still holding as a support zone. So we're going to keep eyes and reaction to this zone in here. All of it is being bought up, being bought up, being bought up. And overall, um, the, the higher low pattern is not lost. Okay, so this is a major higher low, major higher low, major higher low. Now an attempt of another major higher low. We lose in here, then we know we have our high, we have our low, we have our double top, and now a, low, a lower low, and we start looking for a very, very long period of consolidation on the Dow. And the Russell, um, we, we talked about this when we back tested in here that we were going to go up into this upper trend line. That's what, let's see what's going to happen when we get to the upper trend line because we're going to have major resistance in the zone. We had, um, you know, a sharp move in here, right? A little bit of lower high, sharp, impulsive move. This one's a little bit weaker than everybody else. Why? Risk, right? BTC started to drop. BTC is showing some risk off. You know, is it the Russell now starting to show us that? Let's be prepared for it. If it were to come down into here, Russell stocks are going to drop pretty hard, right? And then we're going to make a lot of money off of that opportunity. So you hate to root for uh, you know more downside pressure, because I know people are holding on positions and you know it's not really what they want to see. But if you're agile and you're cashed up, and you were off for three or four weeks and you missed those recent runs, hello, you would think uh, you would like to say, hey, a little bit more downside, a little pressure, open up a lot of ranges, oversold bounces, uh, weekly higher lows, monthly higher lows. That's gonna be a great opportunity, and that's what I'm looking for. Um, not looking for it. Kind of like, hey, if it comes, great. It's going to be a good opportunity. So as of right now, you can see the Russell setting up a piercing pattern candlestick on the eight hour. It's pre-market volume. It's overnight volume. It's very light, but you can see it's going to attempt to make a higher low in here. And technically, that's our higher low. That's a strong higher low. This is a part of the trend. We get an ABC correction. This could be a bottom that shoots us straight back up. So I don't want to get blinded and blindsided by just, hey, I want to lower it. Yeah, I do. But I can see that this could reverse right in here. We're going to need a little bit more information. It's going to be tough to trade. It's going to be difficult because you could get caught. Here we go. It's going up to a new high and you miss it. You don't pay. Or you get into it and you're like, oh, I still want to be very protective. You keep your stops very tight and then your stops get hit. Um, and because you had it too tight, it just goes straight back up. Yeah, nature of the beast. Hope for your greed regret. It's going to hit you in this zone because this zone's going to be a little bit complicated. Or um, you go for it and you get all aggressive. You're like, oh man, guys, buy the dip. It's always buy a dip. And then we do truly get that correction down and that goes for everybody. Uh, BTC in here, you can see it is shaping up a bear pennant. It's kind of a little bit too visible. When things are too visible, you kind of like always have to be, hey, everyone's looking that way. You know, sometimes it works, right? Everyone's looking that way and it does get followed through. It's not a perfect, but you can see here we are setting up a bear pennant. Very visible, so I mean, the technical play would be this would break and we would be looking lower. Also, 
it's a big, you know, I would say this is the start of the consolidation phase. So I would anticipate we're going to go lower. I would anticipate we're going to come down into this 37 K range, but a bull break that comes up in here, you know, I would be strongly looking for a lower high because you do not see impulsive moves like this strong volume, all of that. And then just immediately go back to a new high. That's not what you would see. That's not typical. Those are rare rarities in a market. That would be a short squeeze. That would be, Hey, some news has come out. Something's changed, right? Like, you know, now it's not just El Salvador, you know, Australia is making it its currency, something like that. Right. Of course, I'm just throwing out things. Um, but in here, then, you know, if we do bull break, I would look for a lower high. I would watch that lower trend line. I would look for a lower high in comparison to the GP. I do think this is going to go into a long period of consolidation. And that's it. Let's get into the tickers that are requested. And the first one, we're going to start off. I could already see our Patel is like trying to smash me with three this morning. But it looks like we have, we'll probably have enough time to get through them anyway. So let's do it. Let's get into Amazon. And what I'm going to be doing this morning is focusing on, I'm going to go through every single one of these. Like GME, we talked about it on the video, on the upload video. This is the buy zone, right? This is the buy zone. You come back into the zone. Um, don't trade it before earnings because what's going to happen on earnings is going to come down. Now, like opportunity has been created. So what I want to see this morning and that's why I got GME at the top of the list, is are we gonna base in here and then shoot straight back up? If we fall through here, allows it to go into more of an oversold condition. So I'm gonna be going through these. Like there's a lot of opportunity in here. Now some of them, I want them lower, like an AMD, I want lower, right? I'm gonna be watching how those develop. First one on the list, as I digress, is Amazon. Now Amazon had a nice run in here right straight up into the golden pocket right back up into this major zone yesterday very bullish in comparison to you know what else we were seeing in you know big tech so very strong still so you can't and this is the point of you know you're just looking everyone's just looking bearish and you know like i always say if everyone's looking in the same direction then you miss the opportunities that are out there because the market likes to pull the wool over your eyes and go another way. Well, look at this. Well, what is this saying? This is not saying much, right? We're still holding it the EDMA. It can be a continuation play. Today, likely opening up a little bit lower. Nope, it's, it's a flat open. So we could have an inside bar. The one caution is, you know, until we get up over the daily, uh, daily reverse golden pocket, be a little bit cautious in case we get distribu distributed in here and then it drops down. So be prepared for that. There's a gap up above all the way to 35.79. It's very healthy. The chart's looking fine. Your one concern is that this is going to be a pivot off of here, right? We're going to pivot off of here and we're gonna come back down and re revisit in here, but there's gonna be a lot of indication and information that gives you that signal before, before you know, it's, it's not gonna catch you by surprise because you're right in the golden pocket. There's a gap up above. Do we fill that gap and then still close within the golden pocket and get a shooting star candlestick? That's what I'd be looking for. But ultimately, it's a higher low. Chart made a higher high yesterday. Extremely bullish in relative comparison to its peers and what else we were seeing in the market yesterday. So that's still looking very strong. NVAX. So let's check it out in here. All right. So we haven't looked at this one obviously in a while. Bull break. We've got a nice fall through and then it was shot down. Let's take that off. Shot down big time. Now, right back up to its resistance. We got up over resistance yesterday, so we did make a continuation higher high. Now we're dealing with all time highs. The chart is still looking pretty strong in here. We had a nice consolidation spot. Boom, we broke out. Daily 80 maze holding. Yesterday did give us a little bit of concern with a reversal candlestick, but the volume is really low. So today could just be an inside bar. Just be an inside bar. We have an uptrend. It's not a nice steady uptrend because of how, how messy it's getting, but essentially here we go, higher lows. We're holding the daily ADMA. It's in an uptrend, depending on how you're trading this, right? Are you in a strong position? If you're in a strong position, you're gonna come up into here. It's a nice trend. I mean, you do have the daily uptrend in here. We know we're gonna have problems all the way up to 331. It did get up over the GP, so the GP is not an issue anymore. I would be looking at that 0.786. Nope. 
Yep, 0.786, let's bring it up. That's the next and last zone. From a fib perspective, I'd be worried about. That's a resistance candlestick right in there. Very low volume range, but we know this is where the chart topped out at. Yeah, it's gonna be, it, this looks like to me, we're gonna have opportunity to get really choppy in this range that you could already see. It's choppy in here to break this. It takes a lot of work to get through it. It's gonna take a lot of work to get through here. We don't have the volume to get through here, so I would anticipate real choppiness in this range. And ideally, it just hangs out in here and it weakens this zone, hangs out, and then eventually goes for a blue sky breakout. Yesterday's candlestick, you take it with a grain of salt, right? You take it with a grain of salt because what was happening in the market. Also, the volume is really light. It does look like there's a trend line in here that is pushing it, right? So something down in that range. If we looked at that, let me see what that looks like with a line chart in there, right? Something in that range. So it gives you a little bit of pause for concern that this is going to get stuffed in here and we're going to see a drop. So watch this lower trend line, watch that upper trend line. Yesterday did we wick it almost. So it does look like there's a potential, a little bit of a rising wedge in here, which would start a consolidation. So keep that in mind as you're watching NVAX. Nike, this was looking like a good opportunity to potentially take an entry yesterday, but then once the market started to drop off, I said, you know what, I'm gonna wait. That's how I talked about it. It could be in the next hour or two. Now we're seeing a little bit of a higher open today. I think it was 2%, 2%, what is it now? 1%. So I'm thinking 162.40, it's gonna be a small bounce to start fighting the sneeze. All right, I think I won the battle there. So this is like a one-to-one -one extension. There was a you know, little bit of reason to say, hey, we could get a bounce in here. We know the four hours in oversold conditions, right? Four hour got down to 20. So there was a reason to say there's gonna be a little bit of a bounce, but it's not strong. The volume is not strong. The bounce is, you know, the bounce would be strong if we could get up over the daily 80 May. So it does lead me to believe we're going to see another lower high and look for some more downside pressure unless the volume really starts to get exciting. So we're gonna see a higher open into this resistance in here without the volume. If the market starts to pull back, I would look for another correction in here, another pull down. And then ideally we get into the 156 zone. I mean, if it drops further, I mean, we, we wouldn't just buy because it hit the 0 0.382, 156. Or like, yes, I'm not just gonna buy because it hits there. We wanna see the reversal. You wanna see it starting to print, a hammer, piercing pattern, volume, bullish off a candlestick, something that gives you indication that a re reversal is happening. A little bit of a higher open in the pre-market kind of gives you the, hey, it's just gonna cool off, right? Now it's not four hour oversold anymore. And the chart's just trading, you know, yesterday's open price, roughly in that range. So let's see what the volume looks like. You don't want to get caught up. If you're in, okay, watch if you're going to see a sell signal and say, hey, let me take my little profits because I bought in yesterday. If you're not in, you don't want to get caught up just buying because it's higher open, higher open in a downtrending stock right now, downtrending on the daily. I know it's still in a larger uptrend. Under the daily 80 may be a little bit patient. Volume isn't saying much. We didn't get a volume climax. This could be just a short term cool on Nike. Let's check out Neo. And what do we got going on here in NEO? All right, so GP, we got stuffed in there. We got stuffed in here. Didn't NEO looks like opportunity, shooting star candlestick, previous day, gap down yesterday, basically a bearish kicker candlestick. This does look like opportunity to go lower, right? We would be thinking in here that we would be looking down right? We would be looking down in here like a bear flag and see some more downside into potentially that 30 range. Lower trend line in here, but yesterday bearish, bearish kicker volumes not really telling us much. We projected the 0.5 of this move in here. I, I'm going to say like be pretty patient in here. This looks like it has opportunity to drop some more. What are we doing here in the pre-market? A little bit down here in the pre-market. So watch your support. If we lose that 0.786, I believe we're gonna come down to 30, maybe even a little bit lower. Do we have a trend line in here that's pushing this down? Do we have a trend line in here that's pushing this down? Let's see this in here. No, well, let me 
just fix that. Let me see. Did that hit there? No, we did get up over it. Let me see what it looks like with the candles. Yeah. If anything, there would be a new trend line developing in here. I mean, there's not enough. Let me just double check that from the highs. No, not enough. I'd be a little bit cautious because I could look at this and say, well, this is a bear flag in here, right? This is a bear flag right now. And you want to be cautious in this bear flag, in this weakness with that shooting start candlestick rejecting the 0.5 that No, I'm not going to call it a bear flag. It does have the characteristic the shape, but no volume in here. And we did get up to the 0.5, so that was a strong bounce. I'm going to say give it some time. Like, don't rush this in here. Obviously, we have some support in here. Let's see what happens in this range, and let's see what comes of the volume. I don't like that shooting star, bearish kicker. That's pressure moving away from that zone. Quick pressure moving away from the zone with a lack of volume, so it's a lack of buyers. Lack of buyers to defend this range, we come back down. You like to see it get a little bit more of an intriguing entry signal. A reversal candlestick off of here. I'd be patient. This looks like it wants to go a little bit lower. Lower high, lower high, lower high, right? We made a new low, we made a new low. Again, make a new low, very much on the table. Roku, let's see what's happening here with Roku. Now that's a better bear flag, right? It's a bear flag, it did break. We've lost the golden pocket. Um, fake out candlestick in here, right? Boom, next day, I mean, never ignore, never swing. Well. Do what you like, but I would never swing a bearish and dolphin candlestick. It just, it, it's just like you're playing with fire, right? And there you go. You got a gap down, a little bit of a bounce, cools things off, and now potentially pushing down lower. Today, listen, we got a bear flag. We are losing this lower trend line in here. We are breaking down out of this zone. There is support still here. This is all still support, right? Bigger picture perspective. Big double top. We could just be trading in this range. We do what a lot of names in the market have done. Trade between the two ranges for a very long period of time. After major runs, major periods of consolidation. This is what it is. This is a major period of consolidation. Had a major run, right? Fake out to break out to a new all-time high. It shot it down. So I'm likely looking that this chart's going to trade in this range. Not lose 272. Trade between the two ranges. When you're trading between the two ranges, there's still going to be a lot of great opportunities. Right, there's going to be a huge amount of opportunities. So right now, I would be saying the opportunity here is an oversold bounce. So looking for four-hour oversold conditions. Not there yet, but it could get there. Let it see a climax. Let it see a strong drop in the zone come into here. Otherwise, it's just like it's just chop, right? You, you play in here, you, you lose it, you give it back. Now you want to buy right back in because there's some supports over here. But what's the signal? What's the real signal in here? The lower trend line. Is it's being breached? Is it is it completely lost? You know, we could look at a zone in here, right? We don't need to be perfectly off of the line. We could be, you know, there's a zone in here that this could hold, right? Let's watch how that develops there on Roku. All right, I think we do got to move a little bit faster. Apple. So. So why is that looking different now? From what I had the other day. Did I have this drawn in here? What was, because I when I went back and I sold it in the after hours, yeah, it was there. So I don't know what happened there. I think I must have made an adjustment yesterday. So this is looking like, we gotta have a little bit of caution, but not complete like, oh, you know, Apple's done. I'm not gonna say Apple's done. We're gonna have to look and see what kind of reaction we get in the NASDAQ ES, because Apple's trading at all time highs. It's trading over the daily NMA, but it's not smooth. It's not doing this nice smooth run that we've had in here, right? It's red, 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 two green, boom, yesterday. Almost a bearish engulfing, dark cloud cover, volume. I mean, it's pretty consistent with the volume that came in the previous day, but we're still trading over the daily ADMA. We're still trading the blue skies. This is the easy trade for me. Like if the market pivots back up, this is the easy one. I just throw some money in Apple shares, common shares and just let it develop, right? It gives you another two, three dollars, goes up a little bit higher and then still be cautious on it versus, you know, going into options and something and we get a red candle of death and boom, the options immediately down 40, 50%. This one's a lot easier to manage. I'm gonna say it's still in blue skies. It's still looking for a daily high or low. It's still trading over the daily 80 main. Let's not get so bearish, right? 
and the market leader is still not saying it's game over. There's that trend line. I would take note of it. We get back up to it again today. And again, I gotta adjust this. Let's see what happens once we get in there. When a chart tops out, um, it generally gives you those couple of opportunities, two, three chances to say, oh, okay, it's not breaking, it's not breaking. And then we get a big pair, a big bear candlestick down. We're not getting the big bear candlestick down. This is relative, right? We're still trading up in this range. Um, unless you get the big bear volume and then it tells you, oh, there's a top, there's the shooting star, there's the spinning top, there's the blow off top. We didn't see that yet. And it's still trading within a couple of points of blue sky. So let's not lose sight of Apple. Still trading up over to daily ADMA as well. Microsoft at an inflection point, right at the 21 EMA. Yep, right at the 21 EMA. Break below 296 equals puts, over 301 equals calls. Every time it's 21, it has bounced, but in the market, I'm not sure. Well, it haven't, hasn't actually touched the 21, right? Did no touch there, almost touched here. And we're there right now. And yeah, this is still going to set up potentially a triangle up in this range. I don't know about 301 equaling calls. I don't see that personally, because 301 is still gonna be in the middle of this range. 301 is right here, right? So, you know, you come up into this zone or you, you know you chop in the zone and those calls don't really go up too much and then we see another rejection in here. I mean, you could, I wouldn't discourage you from doing it, but 301 I wouldn't say is the major level. Like I know you're looking at these highs as the 301 zone, but there's still all this in here. Hidden bullish divergence on that new low, so we need to correct back to the upside. Weekly chart could use a little bit more consolidation, come back down to the weekly ADMA. Just watch how this triangle develops, okay? We did have that, now, now if, that, if that higher low is lost, I'm going to assume this is just gonna get obliterated and it's just gonna fall out and we're gonna be you know, dropping down right back into that box, right? Boom, boom, and then come back down into here if that low is lost. I'd be surprised this low is lost and we hold this little range in here. Um, bounce off of here, we're gonna get one more touch and then if it's gonna break full with the market. That's how I would look at it. That's what I'd be watching on MSFT, AMD. AMD is very intriguing, right? Very intriguing. We still have the opportunity to do some form of a triangle. We would look at that from like this perspective, right? I'm not sure if this is gonna be the scenario. I prefer this one and this is being greedy. This would be like, hey, wow, look at the chart. Follow the blueprint perfectly. and. More often than not, it's not going to do that, right? And not that it's an easy pattern to see, but um, I'm sure a lot of people would be looking at the same scenario in here to see a back test in this range, an ABC correction down in here, and then we start looking for a bigger, larger run and a new all-time high eventually. This, if the market weakness, if the market does give us weakness, we look in here. This is what's going to happen. Without the market weakness, we could say, we're about to bounce off of this zone right now and come back up in here. This will get people excited. This will mean we're gonna have a good day. Let's watch what happens. I don't know where that upper trend line will form. That's just, hey, potentially, right? And then we start looking for that scenario. So both scenarios are still in play. We knew this was the likely scenario, one or two, right? You're gonna get a triangle or we're gonna come back down in here. Either or is fine, should give us a payday in in September. If not, worst case, comes down into here, drags out into here into October, and then AMD pays the bills for the rest of the year, eventually. Fubo is very interesting. Now Fubo, did it have some news yesterday or something? Anyways, if it did, it's still within the pattern. So I'm looking at this pattern to develop that we do get some form of a triangle up in here. Okay, that's what I wanna see. Another touchdown of the lower trend line, you could consider that as a buy signal, see a reversal off of it. I would look at that and say, maybe we're gonna take an entry here in Fubo. 
Um, that would be pretty interesting. Or we wait for it to come back up and break that upper trend line because it will take some time. That would be common shares for me if we come off of this low because it could take a long time before we come up and break those highs. 30.89, right? And then bounce off of there and look for a break. So as of right now, I would like to see a move down to that lower trend line. It doesn't matter like today. Like today you could see an inside bar, higher open. What are we doing here? Pre-market 28, a little bit of a lower open. Um, you know, immediately pops back up. There's a short-term scalp trade. I'm trying to look at these things from a bigger picture right now versus, hey, let's look for the scalp trade. So right in here, I'm going to say I would like for it to come down into this lower trend line to be a buy signal here or wait for a break of 30.89. That's how I'd be watching football. TPR, head and shoulders on the daily. Tapestry. Let's see, head and shoulders on the daily. Yeah, I don't see that. I don't see that in here. Like, are you looking here as a head and that as a right shoulder? This was already in a downtrend, so I would say no. Are you looking here as a left shoulder and this is a head and this is a right shoulder? We've already broken down below 38, 34. I'd say no. Um, if anything, maybe it's going to end up developing a big like wedge, like something like that. That would be something that could develop maybe even a triangle in here. Right? That's how I'd be looking at it more. But this looks like it's about ready to break down in here. So I would be looking more at that lower trend line, 39, 31. Basically a, a flat open in here. We got a mild support down at 39. If that's lost, watch this lower trend line, 37. That's how I'd be looking at it. I would say this is potentially more of a falling wedge that's going to develop. And we would want to see another touch down on this lower trend line in here. And where are we here? Peloton. Peloton launching a peril line as of today. So they had some bare news the other day, right? That their numbers were extremely reduced. I don't know when, which candlestick reacted to. Maybe it was that one in there. So we're down into the golden pocket zone. We are hovering around it. That lower trend line didn't hold. That's out the window. Let's watch this upper trend line as it continues to develop. Okay, so they had an announcement today that they're launching apparel. I don't think it's mattered much. We're not seeing much of a reaction here. Still downtrending in here. We lost our support, right? We're slowly downtrending. Watch the daily ADMA continues. If it continues, like we see a little bit of bounce and then it continues to drag it down. Ultimately, I think this is going to be a good opportunity, right? Where's that dip going to be bought? Big move off of the bottom. Consolidation phase happening in here. I would look to say, hey, there's going to be a reversal. Are we four hour oversold? We were 24, cooling off now all the way up to 41. So I'd like to see something like, you know, is is it going to trade sideways in here, right? And then you can build a, a, a position with a stop below that zone. It's not enough to say we are trading sideways. If we're going to hold this GP range, we would need a few more days. Today, potentially, we pop up, watch the daily ADMA. If we do see strength, you do get the candlestick you're looking for because they have some news. We see a bullish character candlestick. There is a gap up above. You watch for the volume. You watch for some sort of signal and say, whoa, look at the volume that's coming in. And then you can start thinking GP because it's a gap fill range in there. Ultimately, downtrending, not a lot of volume. Doesn't look like positioning yet. We are looking for a reversal. You're looking for the reversal signals. It could happen during the day, right? It just happens during the day, you, boom. You recognize volume and it's a potential zone because it's a GP, it's had a big run, it's had a very long period of consolidation. We've been consolidating since July, right? Price, time, all of it has happened. Absolutely, could look for another pivot, right? When it does, let's watch out for that trend line. And the gap fill with the golden pocket, having some confluence with the gap fill, it's actually just under it. Kamiko. Is this like uh, uranium or is that CCO? This is, 
Is this... What are these guys? Uranium. Yeah, it is uranium. Uranium. What's CCO? Kumiko. Oh, it's the same company, just on a different exchange. Major run, right? Major run. We talked about this the other day. Like, if you're going to buy now, you're likely going to get into a little bit of trouble. Um, so, that was a nice dip buy yesterday, right? But it's a hanging man candlestick at the top of a trend. That's a candlestick that can really trap you. Now, there's momentum in this space. And whenever there's momentum in the space and you see a candlestick and you mean like, oh, that's bearish, but you forget the, the overall trend, the dominant trend right now is extremely bullish and the momentum is here. So these candlesticks could get swallowed and then next day you see a higher open and you still see pressure, it's a spin top candlestick, so we're starting to get a little bit exhausting. Like, who did this the other day? I'm just trying to think of a name. Was it big? Okay, so, I mean, the momentum pushes higher, right? The momentum pushes higher. It's not a uh, hanging man candlestick or anything. But it kind of gives you those same, uh, those same signals that, you know, they're starting to see pressure, but you go higher. And again, you see pressure, you go higher. And again, you see pressure. That could be something you look at here in this chart because I would not be a buyer in here, right? I would obviously like to be holding it right now. But that's a hanging man candlestick on a chart that needs to consolidate. Inside bar is a very likely scenario. But wouldn't be surprised. New high, and then you start to see that pressure again because it does need to cool. We know it needs to cool. It's still outside the upper bond band. It is riding it. It can continue to ride it. Let me see what it looks like on the weekly. Yeah, weekly's fine. Day 80 May. That's fine because it's riding the five. It hit the five. Now let me see that. It's been hitting the five. It almost hit the five the other day. So that's still fine. Hanging man can't stick up the top of a move. You have to have caution, but it would not be like you have to sell. Okay, you could be using that as your support right now. Ultimately, look to see the four hour higher low as your stop because once the four hour ADMA, we did lose it in here. This could be your next opportunity to get out and then it fades down. Just be prepared for that. Lulu, gap and go. Not in right now, but scalp opportunity. Lulu's gapping. Man, we gotta get Lulu back on the radar. Oh. Damn, look at Lulu. Oh, earnings. They had massive earnings. Um, yeah, it's definitely gonna have scalp opportunity. Right? In the in these cases, you know the chart is, is gapped. Where is this? That was after hours. Okay, you know it's gapped, you know there's gonna be some profit takers today, right? There's going to be some profit takers. Anybody who swung options, they want to lock in some profits. It's a non-traded in range gap down below. So keep that in mind. Um, is it going to be a gap and go? Well, you really watch that early price action. So the first price action, because it's so high, we could look for an immediate push down and then see what that looks like, right? If it immediately pushes up and you're not in, then you get caught. You could get caught because you're chasing it versus just wait for that two minute higher low, right? Look to see what happens when the two minute ADMA is touched. And then if it's hit, you can use that as your stop and then you get that new high and then you have that continuation gap and go bullish character candlestick all day. If it's immediately sold off and we start making lower lows, instead of making those higher highs on those short term time frames, and I don't mean a two minute pushing us down right away because what, what happens, we pivot, lower high, lower low, okay, it's gap fill. Lower high, higher low, higher high, here we go. And generally, when that's the case, when it pushes us down, it takes about 30 minutes. And then later on, it starts to move up at the end of the day. So yeah, definitely is going to have an opportunity today for a scalp. Just be a little bit cautious in that early price action. Amazing. Lulu, now I'm trading 400s. Zoom. It's still going to do it. It's still going to give us that great opportunity. But the key is to be patient. Remember, we talked about a scenario that we can just trade sideways for a very long period of time. And that's the scenario right now that I think is in play. And then slowly we're going to recover. Even if we make a new low, a new low that doesn't get much follow through and then it gives it to us. You don't want to get too soon, too aggressive in here. It is, a, it is going to be a hell of a setup to get to that gap fill eventually. Unless that just marked the top, it's just a catastrophic fundamental 
a note that analysts and banks are looking at from their earnings and that's it, it's not gonna come. So we wanna be patient, make sure that the signal is there. Is it an eight hour bear flag? You know, it's a four hour bear flag broke bear, you know, so of course, yeah, it's an eight hour bear flag that broke bear. Doesn't mean we're gonna come down and make a new low. I do see this scenario taking place. We trade sideways and then eventually we're gonna have a better signal to make the entry. If you're making an entry right now or you're trying to trade it right now, it's a lot of choppiness. Like I've watched it, it's a lot of choppiness. I have it up, it's up on the board, but it's a lot of choppiness, right? Nothing's very clear, no clear trend, no strong, uh, no strong, actually yesterday there was something, right? In here, there was a strong sign of volume in here. So there was an opportunity, right? Small, it did push up, make a little bit of a, a new high. But again, it gave you like a, a rising wedge in there. But it looks like it happened to the end of uh, the end of the day. So then it dropped down. I'd be patient in here. It's still gonna give us a, a hell of a trade, but what's the signal right now, right? It's just not there. An easier trade now is just, you know, depending on when we get there, is we break that new high. Break the new high, you make the entry on 301.81 break. Um, no follow through, you mean to take it off. Boom, volume comes in, short squeeze starts to happen, shorts are covering, we start thinking gap fill, there's your trade. It was very simple. That's all we needed to wait for. Tesla. Uh, golden pocket, yesterday we touched it. Lower wick, there was some dip buying yesterday in Tesla. 755, today should be an inside bar. The only, thing, the only way it's not gonna be an inside bar is the market does that heavy move in either direction. Boom, yeah, thanks. Freaked out everybody yesterday. Here we go straight back up. Boom, Tesla's gonna go 786 today. Um, 775, 786. And market, no, it does, a, it does go into the correction. Here we go, right? There's your rejection. Thank you. Um, thank you, Golden Pocket, Golden Pocket exit. Now, I would still look at this as we're gonna go higher. Okay, I would look at this as we're going to come down and then we're going to go higher. I'm still gonna be looking at it from that perspective. So let's watch today, inside bar to start, 756, higher open, right? We break the high, watch 775, 786. That's what I'll be watching on Tesla today. FedEx is gonna be opportunity for an oversold play, daily oversold, daily oversold conditions. Where are we in the LBB? LBB is pointing down. We're just trading between the LBB and the ADMA. You don't wanna do that from a bullish perspective. If you're in a bearish trade, that's what you want. You continue to walk it down. Because the volume is not getting extended, we're not seeing a volume climax, so it tells us we could watch this grind us even further down. Let's watch the 0.786, 254, and then down into the support in here. And then see if we could get extreme daily oversold conditions, and then there's a trade right in there. Etsy, um, for the grind higher, it seems to be basing at the top, at the top trend line. All right, it's looking, yep, yeah, top trend line. Let's double check in here. This is still a golden pocket that it's struggling with. Here's another little zone between the GP and the 70.7. So you might wanna add that to your fibs. Yeah, I'm noticing charts reacting to you a lot. They get over the GP and then that's where they stall. They don't break that and then they fall down. Um, let's look at this in here. So top trend line, I don't see a top trend line. Okay, unless we're looking over here. Let me see what that looks like here, right? This one would be, you're not really seeing pivots off of this. You know, so if you're gonna say this is a wedge, like you could, you could you see if you get a reaction there. I see a top trend line here. I wouldn't draw that because that would take time. That would, we would need to see that established, right? Like that would be only our second touch of that zone. And then we would be looking at this as, is this gonna do a longer term triangle in here? So potentially that could be the case, right? We could, actually I would do it, yeah. I would do it. There's enough candlesticks in here. And that could be a scenario that takes place. So I'd be watching those two trend lines. And we are stuff, we, we are like one, two, three, four, five, six, seven days struggling with the golden pocket in here. So that gives you a potential topping pattern and then we drop down. So keep that in mind. Keep that open. That this sells off. Now, 
let's just keep in mind because if I was in this trade, it's just an inside bar, I'd still be waiting for the reaction because we could break bull out of here and come back up and then we'll be looking at that trend line higher. So keep that in mind. Twilio, let's see what's happening here. Bounce off COVID trend line, looking to grab a starter position. Whoa, okay, so. This chart's been following the technicals pretty good. A lot of the stuff has worked out. Now, GP zone, COVID trend line. Now, is that the COVID? Yeah. COVID trend line. When did this trend line get established here? In May? It's far, far between touches. So I, I'm not convinced on this trend line, but I mean, let's have it there. Let's leave it there. Let's clear this up. Let's see what happened here. Yeah, coming off of this low in here, 275. It's got potential for much more downside, okay? You know, we would be thinking this is our first leg, right? A, B, and then a drop down, a drop down that comes a lot further, so keep that in mind. I would wanna respect that, like, did you get in, you said? Looking to grab, I would wanna respect that low, yesterday's low, right? Because then I'm gonna think, no, this is gonna come down at least to 323, maybe further, keep that in mind. Um, where are we here? We got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight tickers to do in 10 minutes. Let's blast them off. Love Southwest. I, I'm looking for this, like a nice base in here. This is an opportunity. Okay. Um, airlines opportunity. Same thing with uh, like CCL, uh, American Airlines, right? That. I mean, this could drop down and then base in here. Um, American Airlines, I think, was doing the exact same thing, right? Base in here. I think there's opportunity. So it's one of those scenarios. What did we do? Love. One of those scenarios is how do you want to trade it? Do you want to take a positional trade right now and say, I'm going to be flexible in my stop. I'm going to get, you know, I want to buy a thousand shares. I'm going to put in 200 shares right now. It breaks down loses this support, doesn't get follow through, right? And it tells us we're basing in here. You can see 47, 37 broke, no follow through, we pushed up. Come back down, break, again, no follow through. That means we're basing in here, we're running as sellers, we look for accumulation, and then the chart goes for a breakout. Eyeing the swing, $4, $5 move, I agree. I think it's an opportunity. Um, but I wouldn't go full shares in case you know, you, you just call this a bear fly, right? You just look at this and you say, oh, that's a bear fly, boom, and it drops. And you're like, oh man, why did I get my full position in, right? Because if it works, you've already got, you just dollar cost average up, right? Up. Um, you start adding more into the momentum, right? It was accumulation that I saw. I got a piece in. Maybe you go one third, maybe you go one, one quarter, whatever, right? I wouldn't go full position in downtrending stocks that still ultimately is a weekly bear flag that could distribute more. I have to keep that in mind. Okay, RKLB. The next space, oh, that's like music to my ears. Like we need, that's what we need. We need to be aware of what's the next big run. Looking to buy calls in anticipation of a pendant breakout. Rocket Labs. Okay, well, it's already doing it. Yeah, so this is a lot of momentum behind this name. Now, this candlestick gives you that pause, right? That maybe that's the blow off top and it's over, but it's not enough. It's not enough to tell me that this is game over and it is very strong right now, huge momentum. Kind of looks like big, right? 1590 here in the pre-market. So we're coming right back up to this resistance. Obviously, it's very extended. If you're buying calls, you're paying a very high premium right now. Um, is there a pen in here on a shorter term time frame? We would need to come down a little bit more, which would be good for your call idea, 
right? We would need to come down and see something down in here, right? And then the calls, the premiums will cool off a little bit. That would be the ideal scenario. If you're buying calls up in here, like you're buying 20 calls in here, I'm sure they cost like five bucks, right? So you, you need, an, you know, what is that? 40% move to, you know, break even on date of expiry. So you buy the high premiums, that's not always the best case. Common shares would likely be a little bit better right now to still get the value out of it. I'm assuming these calls have exploded because of the move, the volume, everything. But this chart, it's hard to say it's done. It is an inside bar. Um, we do have that concern. We get up over 590, you, you like just like that other chart we talked about, it stalls a little bit, right? It stalls a little bit because it's getting too extended. We're gonna need, need to cool off, but we know charts can get a little bit parabolic. And we saw that here with space, the original, right? Boom, spinning top, pushed up higher, pressure. You know, this one's looking a little bit different. It's coming straight off of a bottom. Right, straight off of a bottom, boom, boom, boom. Very extended, calls up in here is gonna be costly, right, and it likely can backfire on you. Shares would be a little bit easier. Just keep that in mind. Not to discourage taking the calls, but just you know, just take on the awareness, I'm, buy, I'm, buy, I'm paying a huge premium to buy calls up in here. Unity, yeah, well, this is looking really nice. GP, it got there, 1.27 is above. Like Just because we got to the GP is not to say it's game over, right? The volume didn't really suggest too much of a reaction. The market um, was pulling down yesterday. Everybody had a pull down day and it's still very healthy. Strong run, very much what you would have been looking for. Eventually, right, we're gonna get a, is it 1272, is it 1618? Where are we gonna stall? GP is here, you wanna be aware of it. We're still holding the daily uptrend. This is looking really good. There's a mild bearish divergence there on that new high, okay? Very mild, but you can't ignore it. Do we have a four hour wedge in here? Let me just double check this. Is there a wedge, right? If we look at this. Well, we would just be, let me see this in here. And then there, just be aware of it, right? Especially we're at the golden pocket now, just to be aware. Overall, don't forget, trend is up, everything's looking good, volume's looking good. We do have the concern that this pattern is happening, which would mean we're gonna fall out of it. So just add it to your awareness, which would mean then you know, um, hey, I'm gonna place a stop at where am I gonna place my stop? Like if I'm long and I know, Gerald, you'd like to have more longer positions, so I'm assuming you have a long position in here. So then you would assume, okay, if this is going to break and you know, 92 to 115, you know, potentially it's gonna see, you know, a $23 potential move down on a break, which would bring me down into like back into the 110 range. You know, am I gonna place my stop over here in the 120s and then look to buy lower? Just some things to consider in your trade plan. Apple, we already did. Wells Fargo. Hey, how's the market doing? Green. Some stocks turning green. Wells Fargo. Okay, so we thought Wells Fargo would come down into the 1618. It's paused in between here. So it is following a correction that it should have done. It also is a daily bear flag. Okay, we got a daily bear flag in here now. Volume on this exit. I think they had some news. This makes sense. I would anticipate some more downside, okay? Even if we just hold into this range, it's I would anticipate some more downside with the bear flag. So be prepared for that. Now, if you break that daily lower high that we just set, right over here and then you can see a little bit of a move back up. But as of right now, I would say this, it's following the plan. It hasn't hit the target exactly where we were looking for, but down into this range, definitely shouldn't be able to provide a little bit of a scalp opportunity for sure. BTC, BTC, I know I just touched on it, but you're looking like to trade it. So let's get into it. Um, let's look at this. Okay, so we are getting a little bit of a move now in here, so the bull break, I would still anticipate to get a, is that a bull break? A 
it broke the trend line, but we still got to get up over that little 47.531. I would still be prepared. Watch out in this zone, okay? It's too easy. That's what we opened up the video with. Like when it's too easy like this, you know, it's like everyone looks like it's going to go down. You need to create a trap, right? You create a trap. Everyone believes, hey, boom, back to the moon. And then we see a lower high in this range. So watch this range in here, the trend line down in that range that was acting as a support. Watch as we get up into the zone, likely gonna line up with a golden pocket as well. PayPal. PayPal, so let's see what's happening in here. Off of that low, where did we come on this chart? Let's just double check this. See, right in that zone between the GP and 70. Just note that. So we gapped up into that zone yesterday and we had a major reversal cancel. So today's gonna be an inside bar, pre-market. Today's gonna be an inside bar, right? Then we're gonna see some funneling of what happens in here. Was there news or something that's like pretty drastic compared to uh, other names? So inside bar today, that's what I look for. Anticipate it to get really choppy inside the inside bar. Um, but if you do see like a nice algo, a nice trend, there's definitely a scalp to get near back to the mid top of the range. But I anticipate we're gonna be in here for a very long period of time. Aterian. And sorry, I didn't get to everybody before the bell rung. Bag holder from 12, wow, admitting. First, like, way to get over admitting you have a problem is admitting you have a problem, right? Um, well, you're kind of liking the action that you're seeing right now. Huge volume yesterday in the Tyrion. So was there some news or something yesterday? Massive drop. At least you're in 12. Like, you're not in 21. You're not asking for a 100% move to break even. 12. It is reasonable. To get back up into there because the gp is at 14. big move yesterday but you had a big upper wick as well big volume inside bar to start not getting the gap up because you're not getting the gap up i anticipate you're just gonna get inside bar unless you see that really strong volume coming in but since you've been bag holding from 12 and now you're getting some movement back up you're likely going to have an opportunity to see this chart gravitate a little bit higher but it's going to take some time Unless we're gonna again, again see some big volume coming in, but likely it's just gonna be an inside bar today. And then you can hold for a couple of days, more days and see what this price action is gonna look for. Daily 80 May, potentially this could be a nice holding trend to get back up to the upside. Apps, I'm very interested in this trade on a reversal, okay? Anticipating that's gonna reject in here, come back down volume. It doesn't mean it's gonna come down in the zone that would be ideal Inside bar, if it breaks bare, then I would be looking for that gap fill GP entry. Big volume, this looks like a major reversal pattern shaping up. Do we need to make one more new low? Come down in here, we wanna be prepared for that. But inside bar to start, if it breaks, the inside bar bearish, let's be patient into the zone. If it's gonna be a strong bullish day, right? And we're gonna see huge volume coming in. Let's check out what's the early volume looking like on the first two minute candlestick. First two minute candlestick, It's not huge volume, it's relative, right? It's relative to yesterday, it's relative to the previous day. Nothing huge so far. If we do see huge volume, then we know it's going to be like at Disney, it's going to be, okay, no, that's it, it's ready to go now. And then essentially this is gonna look like an inverse, inverted head and shoulders with a big left shoulder. This should take time, it's gonna be inverted. That would look more look like a bull flag. Pull is there, volume is there to justify this as a bull flag and then it pops out. Last but not least is Upstart. Let's see, Upstart. Upstart had a hanging man candlestick yesterday, but it did have the four hour trend. Okay, so inside bar, inside bar to start, the four hour trend is the dominant trend in here right now, right? Still holding very strong. Like if you're going top fishing here, 
you get stopped out, you can try again at 287. Obviously, the chart is extended. Some bearish divergence on the daily. It's starting to give you those little bit of extended signals. These are the ones that you make a new high, don't get followed through, make a new high, don't get followed through. But inside bar to start, right? Going top fish, you want to lose this four hour trend, lose that four hour ADMA. That's what I'll be watching. Hope everybody has a great day. Let me see how the market's starting. It's a mixed bag out there. And nothing's down big, nothing's up big. Let's watch that level today on ES. We're there again. We're right up against it again. That's where I'd be focused. And on a break, what's the volume look like? All right, and do we back test it and hold, and then we think about the GP. Hope you have a great day. Peace out, everybody.